First of all, I'm going to show you the, the legitimate shop way to do this, and next I'm going to show you the old-fashioned uh, shade tree way to check an alternator. Nine times out of ten, when your alternator goes bad, the battery light will come on. But very often what happens is, is you get an alternator that won't put out as much electricity as it should, and it won't quite trip this light. But you'll notice that your uh, charging uh, gauge here, your, your battery gauge is going to start to drift down towards the 8 there, even while you're underway. This is an indicator that your alternator is not working correctly. But sometimes there's a malfunction with these electronics. They're very simple and basic, and sometimes they'll fail. Once you have the voltmeter hooked to the batteries, and you're testing the voltage, go ahead and start the truck. Okay, G, go ahead and start it. Okay, notice that the voltage is climbing. This tells you that your alternator is working. It should go to 14 something. Now, the shade tree way is you use a screwdriver and you stick it to the back. And if there's a magnetic field created, at the back center of the alternator, it's like that, see how, see how it's, I'm not, I'm not going on it, okay? Then your alternator is more than likely functioning correctly, okay? This is, a, this is an old school way of doing this, and I'm talking real shade tree stuff, but sometimes that's all you got when you're in a pit. This will determine fairly quickly if your alternator is working correctly or not. This won't work when the batteries are fully charged, because the voltage regulator will not turn on the alternator and you won't get any magnet at the back there. You know, we're at 14.3, 14.2, which is, that's pretty strong. Right? The batteries and the alternator are pretty good in there. Once we've established these things are okay, we can go to the next step. Now, you may not be able to test the alternator if your truck still doesn't start, okay? But once you get started, it's a good idea to check that if you've noticed that your batteries are running low. Make sure that alternator is working good. You know, uh, the best deals on alternators that I've found have come from local rebuilders. Uh, uh, usually if you have a diesel shop that does a lot of rebuilding and whatnot, they're in the, uh, the electric business also. If you look in your phone book, there's either an auto electric or diesel electric type shop in most major cities, or the Ford dealer is good. Now you can go buy this alternator at AutoZone or some of these other places, but I have found that due to the types of stress that a, uh, that a diesel truck puts on these components in terms of drawing electricity for these batteries and whatnot, that they don't last very long from those places. They use poor quality components in the manufacturer. You know, they give you a warranty, but you know, what are you going to do when you're 500 miles away and the thing gives up? The next part of our diagnostic procedure here is in the starter solenoid. At this point, if we've determined that the batteries are hot and whatnot, and the electricity is here, okay, the potential electricity is here to send to the starter, the next thing we need to look at here is our starter solenoid and the components related to it. The next area of concern that we're going to deal with is the starter solenoid over here, and we need a test light to do this. The starter solenoid takes the electricity from here at the battery, there's a cable that runs through here and ends up here at the starter solenoid, and it takes that electricity and transfers it to the starter. It's important that we test the starter solenoid. It's important to test the starter solenoid to make sure that the power is getting here to this terminal. Now, this wire here is what comes from your ignition key. And this wire here is what goes to the starter. In fact, it's actually attached to the starter right here. In fact, this is... This wire right here, this wire right here goes underneath the truck and is attached to the starter right here. This is where it's attached to the starter on the back of the starter solenoid on the starter. Now there's a starter solenoid here. There's actually two starter solenoids on the Power Stroke Diesel's trucks. I don't know exactly why, but that's the way it's designed. And this is where that wire goes to. And there's a hot, large cable that comes straight from the battery to this terminal. And when the power comes to here, the, the electricity is transferred from here to here and engages the starter. And there's the gear that engages with the flywheel and starts the truck. Now, let's take a look at this starter solenoid and see what it takes to make it work correctly. First of all, starter solenoid 
needs to have incoming power here correctly. You pop this off, this comes from your ignition key. And then you want to set it here. You want to set it here in such a way that you can see it from inside the truck if you don't have anybody to help you. So I'm going to go over here and turn the key. Now the truck won't start, but you see that light coming on? Every time I turn the key, that light comes on. There's a couple reasons why power will not come to this lead when you turn the key. There's three components, well two components, and, and it's a different component whether you have a stick shift or an automatic. First of all, you know, the ignition switch can be bad, but that's very unusual for an ignition switch to be bad. It, it just doesn't happen very often. But on the side of the transmission, you have what's called a neutral safety switch. It forces you to put the automatic transmission in park or neutral. And if that particular component fails, then you can get no power to this lead going to your starter solenoid. The other thing that goes bad is on a stick shift truck. There's a, a, a device called a, a clutch activation switch. If you're not pushing the clutch or that, that particular component fails, then you won't get any power here. That information is not within the scope of this particular video, but now you know that there's no start problem, it's an electrical problem between here and the ignition key. And it's a good idea to investigate that further or have somebody take care of that. Now that you've determined that you're getting power to this plug coming into the side of the solenoid that comes from your ignition switch, you want to determine that power is coming out of this end. Now, on this truck there's nothing wrong with it, but if you, if you turn the key, you should, feel the, you should feel, first of all, as the key gets turned, you're going to need somebody to help you with this, that the solenoid goes clunk, clunk. You can feel it moving in your hand. Okay? If it doesn't go clunk, clunk, and if when you turn the key you get no power to this end, then your starter solenoid is bad. You need to replace the starter solenoid. Now when you replace the solenoid, it's a very simple procedure, but when you replace this, it's crucial that you put these wires back on here exactly as they are. My suggestion is, is that you take the screws and attach it to the body, slide it over here, attach the new one to the body. Once you have attached your new starter solenoid to the body, then go ahead and attach each terminal separately so that you don't mix any of the wires up. It's crucial that it goes back on here correctly. Now. If you're turning the key and, and, and you test this particular plug and it lights up and it still doesn't start, then more than likely you have a starter problem and it's time to replace the starter. I recommend that if you need to replace your starter that you go ahead and remove it. Okay, there's three bolts on them that hold it. There's one on the top that's usually a bit fun to get to, 13 millimeter or a half inch. You've got to get an extension to get past here. And then there's two others on the bottom that are reasonably easy to get to. And then you remove these two. Now this would be attached on a, a truck, of course. I cut it because it came out of a junk. But these, these terminals need to be removed. And then the starter comes out uh, in your hands. Now you need to take it to a rebuild shop. Uh, I don't particularly like to buy my starters uh, from anybody but a local rebuilder simply because they'll stand behind their, their, their parts. Now if you're doing a lot of traveling and you're on the road a good bit, I would recommend buy your starter from Ford. It's expensive. But if the thing goes bad somewhere, which more than likely it won't, then you can go to a local Ford dealer and get it dealt with. If you get to a point and all these components seem to be functioning correctly, and you really need to take it in and have somebody take a look at it. There's something going on here that's keeping this truck from, from not starting. Very often it's a ground problem, and ground problems can get pretty interesting. Alright, now, one last thing. If your truck won't start and all of the starting systems seem to be okay, you need to crawl underneath the truck with a 15-16 socket like this and put it on the end of the crankshaft, just like so, and turn the crank. If you go under there and turn this and try to turn this crank and nothing happens, you've got a far serious problem than a bad starter. You've got an engine that's locked up. You need to buy the engine module and we need to go from there. Now we've done a comprehensive overview of the procedures that need to be looked at in terms of the no crank situation. Once we've determined that the primary starting electrical system is in good shape and working order, then we can move on to the next step.